hello, good day, and welcome back. And so today, we're going to wrap up pretty much talking about arrays in JavaScript by looking at some pretty advanced usage of arrays. And I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but just some of the methods, some of the additional methods that an array provide you. Um, two of the methods I'm going to cover today are for each and reduce. So for each basically does what you think it sounds like it to do. For each element of the array, I'm going to ask the array to call a function that I provided for each element of the array. So you can imagine this as the array taking my function, which you usually call a callback, and my function value and invoking that function, um, which for each element of the array. So first, it's going to take the first, the value for the first element, call my function with it, and my function have the opportunity to produce some type of output. And then it will call my function again with a second value, and so on. And each time it calls my function, my function can produce something different. That's why I call the output sort of differently there. But it's the same function. Notice this function is in this, is the same, which is the middle, you know, oranges type of, of box. That is the one function that getting called over and over and over. So let's take a, a more detailed example of what this might actually look like or the benefit for being able to do something like this. So let's say we have the daily temperature, and this is for day one. And you want to call some function to print out the temperature and what time it was taken. And so you can see for the very first one, the output at the bottom there is, you know, it was 78 degrees at 8 a.m. And then the middle one and so on. But it's the same function that's giving you the different output just because you get different input, which is mainly the um, values associated with that current um, element. And we can talk more about this. So let's just take a quick look at ex some examples to see how you might use this. All right, so let's look at the example. And in the interest of making the video as short as possible, um, I'm not going to spend too much time showing you that I run it. Um, you have the code, and you can trust me that this is the output. Um, I run it here, and I copy the output. So I'll go over the example a little bit, though. And so for this first example, what I want to do is print the temperature for each day. And I want to use the for each method and have it call my function called print daily temperature. And my function, as you know, if I use this as a callback, which is a function that's going to be passed there for each method here, when JavaScript is ready to call my function print daily, I'm passing the value of the function, it's going to call it and execute it. It's going to call it for each element of this array, passing in the element of the array and the index. So we can expect on the very first call, so my function, I'm going to get, you know, day one temperature here array, and then the value is zero. Okay, that's the index, we're doing zero base indexing. So that's why I can print out day one dash index plus one, which give me one was whatever the temperature was, and that's uh, the value I get. And so it goes to reason that it would work for all of them. Um, slightly different example, take on the um, slight, not very different. On the for each is now I'm going to use change this method a little bit and I'm going to say well I'm still taking the temperature and the index and no I want to pin the temperature for that day only for one day but I also want to print out what time the temperature was taken so we know that oh, this is at 8 a.m. 12 and 6 p.m. respectively on the index here is 0 1 and 2 so I document that there. So if I create an array with these strings that I, I want to print out, then if I'm taking the temperature and the index of this temperature, I can also use that index to figure out the time. And that's exactly what I did. So I have all the times here. And then I use in the index, I go into this array and get the appropriate time. And now I could print that out and I get an output like this, right? The method I want to cover for an array is reduce. And reduce is pretty straightforward and simple in that you're thinking about reducing all the, through some computation, taking all the elements of our array, their value, and coming up with one result or producing one uh, value at the end of that. And so a good example of that is if, for example, I want to calculate something like the sum of all temperature for in the array for a day, I can say I'm going to reduce those daily temperature, the array of the daily temperatures, into some final value, which here using the sum method, um, I can get you know 236 for the sum of all temperature for day one, for example. Looking at the example for uh, reduce, 
what I want to do is calculate the average temperature for each day. So you can imagine that one way to do that, if I want to calculate the average, just let's focus on one day. If I give you the array or the set of temperatures for one day, what you'd like to do is actually sum this up, producing one value. And that's what the reduce function does, right? So using the reduce function here, this is my reduce function that calculates the sum. It takes uh, a previous value. So since uh, if I call this uh, pass this to reduce, reduce is going to call it with uh, the first call is going to be with, you know, the second value pass in previous, which is it's going to pass 83 here as current value and 81 here as current value and 76 as the previous. So when I add those two, it returns it. And on the second call, it's going to call, call, call it with 79 as the current value. And the previous would be whatever was returned, which is the sum of 76 and 81. And then when I return those two, that's the sum of this array. And you can see the documentation for, for each and for reduce. And it's pretty illustrative um, to show you the, document, the example for reduce. Um, here on the first call where the previous value is, as you can see, the first call, the previous value is zero, and the current value is one, because the first call, it calls with this, and it passed that as the previous. And then the second call, it passes two as the current value, but previous value is the sum of these two, for example. But you get yeah, whatever you calculated and return on the first call is what's called with the previous value. So anyway. Um, so that, that's one way, and you can see the documentation, and if you're confused, you can read that documentation or ask me in the comments. And so now, if this is calculating the sum, then surely, when I wanted the, the, the average temperature for each day, I can say week for each, then I'll get the array for each daily temperature, and I will do a reduce on that to get the sum. And of course, I divide the sum by the length of that array, and now I can produce the average temperature. And so that's basically it, okay? Okay, so that's it on arrays and the slides are in the repository. And remember, you can go to the repository in GitHub. Um, it's in, um, on the website. Um, I'll put a link um, in this video to the repository again. And you could just go browse the repos repository, see the slides and get all these link and the code sample. All right, I hope you learned something. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye.